All right, in the last section of this lesson, I claim we were getting close to the end. We, we really are, believe it or not. In this section, we are going to continue to do some sort of fixing up and cleaning up of the final version of our platformer game. Uh, some of what we're doing is not new, so I'm going to take shortcuts in the video lesson uh, so that we don't take up time. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create some pickups that we can use for uh, giving the player some points and allowing them to have some additional ammo if they use up all of their ammo. For the pickups, you need to bring in some additional sprites from the resources folder that go with the project. I'm not going to do it in the video, I've already done it. The sprites you're going to bring in are the strawberry sprite, name it S Strawberry. And that's it, you don't have to do anything else with it. The ammo sprite, name it S Ammo. Don't have to do anything particular with that. And while you're out in the resources folder, please also bring in the background image. You don't have to do anything with that. We'll use that to give a little more interesting image into our background. And bring in something that's called Sean Spalding Trigger. And then I renamed it S Trigger. Don't have to do anything with that one either, okay? So the way this is going to work is we want to allow, we want to place some strawberries out into our room and if the player collects them they get points and ammo out in the room. If the player collects those, they collect some additional ammo. To do that, it's finally time that we go in and create a controller object that can track uh, all of these pickups and health and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so that we will be able to keep track of these things and be able to display them out on the screen. So at this point, I want to modify where we are storing some of the variables that we're keeping track of now. We've, we've done a lot of work up to this point in this project on the player object. And in fact, on the player object in the create event, we've are recording some movement variables, but also player health variables and some shooting variables. I'm going to move a couple of these things off of the player and onto a controller object. And in doing that, we're going to have to update some other scripts also so that things don't break. So pay careful attention to this part. Okay? Let's close down our player and let's create a controller object. We'll call it O controller. And on our controller object, we will have a create event. And in the create event, we're going to define some variables. I'm going to do a little copying and pasting in the background here so just to save a little time. We're going to create our custom version of score, not the built in score. I'm giving it an underscore at the end to make sure that it is differentiated from the built-in version. If you use the built-in version, you may run into some issues. Then if you notice, I'm also going to put player health onto the controller object, and I'm going to move remaining ammo also from the player object to the controller object. So player health is going to be on the controller, remaining ammo is going to be on the controller. Therefore, let's go back to our player for a moment. Come on, player, where are you? Into its create event, and let's get rid of player health. We're taking it off of the player. And let's get rid of remaining ammo. We'll take that off the player as well. All right. We'll have to modify things, as I said, when in the step event, for example, we're going to have to do a few things, and we'll have to, uh, we have to change things in the enemy, but we'll come back to that. Okay? For now, just the key is player health moved from O player and remaining ammo also moved from O player. Okay, You need to make this change for a very specific reason that I'll get into a little later in this video, but make sure, make sure that you do that change. Okay? Here on our, on our controller object, there's one more thing I want to do in the create event, which is to start the music playing for the entire game and uh, so I want to check first if the 
music for the game is not playing, then play the music. This will prevent any possibility of having the background music accidentally playing over itself by doing this check to make sure that it's not playing. Okay. So that's one thing we do with controller objects, right? All through the class, we've used controller objects to declare, initialize, and then manage the display of variables that relate to everything that's sort of going on within a room. So let's do the display part. We're going to add an, a draw event, but unlike what we've done before, where we just used a regular draw event, we're now going to use draw GUI. Draw GUI will allow the score and the health and the remaining ammo information to show in the correct location in the room even though we're using a camera remember we created a camera that's following the player inside a much larger room if we use draw we have to do some extra work to position the GUI information so that it moves in conjunction with the camera where if we use draw GUI we don't have to basically we don't have to worry about it so much so we're going to come in here and I'm going to again save a little time on our video here and paste this stuff in in evil clutches we drew a health bar if you remember and we put it right above the player's head this time we're going to draw a health bar as well but instead of putting it above the player's head we're just going to place it in the upper left hand corner of the room and that's what I'm doing here and uh, the value that we're going to display inside the health bar is the value of the player health okay, which I have now moved as I said we moved it from the player to the controller object so because it's on the same object that this draw GUI event is on we don't have to address it in any special way it'll be able to find it and we're going to have a special font that we want to use for the score so we need to set the font and in my case I've made it but I bet you haven't so if you've not made a font you just go to fonts right click choose create font give the name of the font as F score and you can use whatever kind of font you want I just use the one that popped in automatically which is Arial font 12 size regular style So we're going to set that as the font we want to show. We'll, I'm setting the color of my font to black. You can make yours different if you want. Then I'm going to draw the score uh, by using string, the built-in string function, to change the number, of the value of score, to a string. Now score lives here as well on the controller object, so we don't have to do anything special to address it. And similarly for ammo, I've moved remaining ammo from the player object to the controller object so we don't have to do any special addressing to reach that remaining ammo value. It'll just show up there as it needs to. Okay, that's it. That's all we need for our controller object. Now I said we we're going to run into some issues because we moved the... Uh, variables some of the variables from the player to the controller object now the way we are talking to those variables and some of our other scripts will break so we need to fix those uh, so let's do that all right um, let's go back into our player and let's just check where are we gonna run into some issues here well, for one thing, we're going to run into some issues in the step event, in some of the places in the step event. And this is an opportunity for us to take a look at how we can use the output window when we hit play to start identifying errors. So without going in and making the changes, I'm going to just start playing. Now we look OK, but as soon as I try to fire my weapon, I get a code error. And let's take a look at this. Okay? It's telling us we have an error on the player object, and it's telling us where the problem is. It's in the step event, right at the beginning of the step event, where we're checking how much ammo is left. And it's saying you haven't set this remaining ammo variable. Well, of course, we have set the remaining ammo variable, but the problem is we moved it from the player to the controller object. So we need to change that. So come back into our player, into the step event, 
And now we need to figure out if we're shooting, right? So come all the way down here. And it says, if remaining ammo is zero, well, now Game Maker no longer knows where to find this remaining ammo because it doesn't live on the player anymore. It lives on the controller. So we need to say, O oh, controller dot remaining ammo. And I'm going to copy this first part because we're going to need to paste it in. Anytime we refer to remaining ammo here on the player, we need to say, hey, now it lives on the controller object, so we need to address it that way, okay? So that is helpful to use that code error window to hunt down where these things exist. Another thing to do, in our case, we can just sort of walk through and double check. Okay, there's nothing in the player input section. In calculate movement, we should be fine. In collisions and movement, let's take a careful look. Is there anything happening in here? No, that's all pretty much what we want there. So there's nothing we need to change there. What about the animations? Is there anything going on in here? Uh, I don't see anything. OK, we may still be missing something. Let's take a look at our collision with the enemy here. Aha. When we are colliding with the enemy, we will lose some health. Well, this player health has moved as well, right? It doesn't live on the player anymore. It lives on the controller object. So I'll paste in O controller dot in front of that. I'll bet anything there's some that we're still missing. But let's take a look and see if we have updated everything correctly so that now GameMaker is able to find all of the all of those variables. Nope, still is unhappy about something. Oh no, now it's saying old controller. It doesn't know what is old controller. What? But you know what we didn't do? We didn't actually put the controller object into our room. So let's do that. I'm going to choose to open up the room and I'm going to put the controller object on the player layer. You can see on the player layer we already have the camera object. So let's put the controller there too. You can put it wherever you want but I'll just sort of position it over near uh, the camera object. Now when we come back out and play the room, we'll see here's our health bar, here's our score, here's our ammo. I can fire on the enemy and you can see the ammo is dropping down. Let's see if I can get some points by stomping on this guy. Oh, I haven't updated the score yet, so we'll want to update the score on our enemy, otherwise we don't get any points for killing the enemy and that would be nice to be able to be nice to be able to do that. You'll notice there is one difference probably in my version of the project than the one that you have, and that's in my version I now have this nice background. And All I've done to do that is I've come over to the background layer in the room and uh, I've selected that background image and then I've chosen to stretch it. And when I stretch it, it'll fill the room all the way up just nicely. Well, all right, now let's uh, create some ways for our player to get some points and or ammo by picking up uh, some of the objects. So I'm going to add a collision event with the strawberry. And all we want to do when the player collects strawberry is to give them some points. We just have to be careful. This is something we've done before, so I'm saving time by copying and pasting here. We just want to make sure that we address the variable where it lives. Score is living on the object controller, so we say o controller dot score, and I'm giving them 100 additional points if they collect a strawberry. I'm playing a little bonus sound, and then I'm destroying the strawberry using with other. That sounds good. Let's do something similar now with the ammo. So we'll do a collision with the ammo, and what are we going to give them if they do that? Well, I'm going to give them ammo. So I'm going to again talk to the controller object. That's where we moved remaining ammo. So we will give them, in my case, 20. 20 seems like too many. I'm going to drop that down to 10. Play a bonus sound, and then destroy the ammo icon. 
And while we are handing out points, we should give the player some points for killing an enemy. And the easiest place to set that up is on the dead enemy object, because it only appears if the player has managed to kill off an enemy. So in the create event here, we can do that here. Let's say, remember where the, sc the score lives. It lives on the controller dot score. And let's add however many points you want to give them for killing off an enemy. I set it equal to 50. Now to have any of that work, of course, we need to add those pickups out in our room. You can put them wherever you want. Maybe I'll put mine above the enemy layer. I'm going to create a new layer called pickups. And I'll grab a strawberry and stick it out in here. And I'll put another one up here, another one over here, one down at the end. And I try to think carefully about where to put the ammo. I'll put one here. I don't know where they're going to be hard to get there, and that's it. It's all the ammo I'm going to let them have. Okay, let's check to make sure all that works without any errors. I can pick up Strawberry, get 100 points, kill the guy, get 50 points. Strawberry seems like it's probably too many points. Our ammo's counting down to zero. I can pick up ammo, and then it shows in the ammo pickup, so this all seems to be working pretty well. Ow. Health is dropping. All right, last thing I want to do here is I want to set things up so that we can move from this room to the next room when we run over here. We've done moving between rooms and room, one room to another room before. Um, in this game, it's a l we have to do stuff that's a little, little bit trickier than what we have done previously. All right, so this is another section where you want to pay careful attention. One of the reasons why I moved our all of our score and our remaining ammo and our player health objects all to the object controller is that I want to set things up so that those values have a memory as we move from one room to another room. And it's easiest to make that happen if I place all of them on a single object, in this case the controller object, and then set up the controller object so that if I place it in the first room, it will retain a memory of all of its variables even as we move to the second room, the third room, and so on. And the way we're going to do that is by coming to the controller object, checking its properties here, and there's a property called persistent. And if I choose persistent, what will happen is that it will retain its memory as, it, as we move from room to room, even if I don't, and in fact I shouldn't, place a copy of the controller object into the second room or the third room and on and on and on. I only have to place it in the first room and it will continue to live in subsequent rooms if I've set this as persistent, okay? So let me talk a little bit about how this is gonna work. First, let's uh, come down to our room and I'm, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just gonna right click on that and I'm gonna choose to duplicate it for now. In your own game, you're gonna wanna redesign this so that it's a little, different design, right? You don't want to have it look exactly the same. And in this uh, second room, I don't actually need to include the controller object because in making it persistent, I can then get rid of it. So let's zoom, zoom, zoom in here. Okay. Zoom in here. And you can see here we have on the player layer, we have the player, the camera, and the controller. So I'm going to get rid of the controller object. Because I made it persistent, it will still live. However, in the second room, I am going to have the, a player, and I'm going to have the camera. And they're going to work exactly the way they worked in the first room. Even though this is a different copy of the camera and a different copy of the player, all the code's all the same, so they'll all work 
just fine here in this room. Okay. Now I need a way for the player to be able to move from one room to the next room. So to save some time, just as I did with the ammo object, I just created a quick ammo object that's solid and visible. I created a quick strawberry object that's solid and visible. I also went ahead and created an exit object that is neither solid nor visible. This is just going to be a tool that we're going to use here in the editor, but that the player won't see, and we'll use it to detect when our player has reached the end of the room. So let's go into our room zero, the first room, and you can see that the way I designed my room was that I left an opening at the far right hand side of the room. Okay? If you've not done that in your own room, you should erase any wall objects that are blocking an exit and erase the tiles over here as well so that you leave a passageway that runs along the uh, end of your room. And so I'm going to place a trigger object out into this area and I'll put it on the walls layer. It kind of makes sense. It's similar to what we're doing with our walls. So I'll grab it. I called mine O exit and place it right here. Let me zoom in on it a little bit. I can uh, stretch this guy out so it fills the entire area, remembering that it's going to be invisible, so it doesn't matter what it looks like here. Okay. So I've placed that exit object out in the room. Then let's come out of the room, go back into, well, we can either set it up on the player as a collision with the exit, or just to be different, we can set it up as a collision between this object itself and the player. Just to try something different, I'm going to do that. So if it'll, if it'll allow me to open itself up. Here we are. We're on the exit object, and I've already set this up. A collision with the player. And all I'm doing in the collision with the player is I'm going to the next room. Now, I'm not doing any checking here, so I could run into trouble in a real game. I would probably want to make sure there is a next room available, or I might want to, instead of saying room go to next, if I want to do some branching, I can say room go to number and put the number of the room, or you can put the ID of the room would also work. But in our case, just room go to next is going to function just fine. All right. So let's give this a try. If I come back into the game, And I'm just going to cruise along here. I want to use up some ammo so that we can see the ammo's running out. I want to have some injuries. I've got some points. Right, let's make our way over here, collect another one of these guys, use up a little more ammo. Alright, so here we are at the edge of the room. Now look at the health, look at the score, look at the ammo. We're down a little in health, score is 350, and the ammo is 6. When I hit the trigger zone, I jump to the next room, it just switches me and now I'm using that new copy of the player, but you'll see the health is still the same. I picked up some points for getting the strawberry and the ammo is the same, and that's because the controller object that we put into the first room was persistent, so all of those values carried through to the next room. All right, good grief, at long last, <laughs> we have reached the end of these video lessons for a platformer. You'll want to uh, look to the Blackboard site soon where I will put instructions for your assignment in which you are going to need to produce a platformer basically that includes everything we've done in this platformer series of videos up to this point plus some additional pieces that you need to add in yourself to give yourself some practice on how to make this stuff happen. Uh, so look to Blackboard for that, and good luck, have fun, and this project uh, should be a major help as you develop your final games, if you're using platformer games. Uh, so have fun and good luck.